One of the most common questions I get regarding the carnivore diet is how do I manage my electrolytes? So in today's video, I'm going to answer just that. For many people on carnivore, electrolyte issues can cause low energy, brain fog, muscle cramps, as well as headaches. But by the end of this video, you'll know how to avoid all of these issues or resolve them if you're currently experiencing them. What even are electrolytes? Electrolytes are minerals that carry an electric charge. Now there are only four electrolytes that we need to consider, and that is sodium, chloride, magnesium, and potassium. All of the other ones completely regulate themselves on a carnivore diet. On carnivore, some people do experience electrolyte imbalances. Now this can lead to a number of issues. Before we get into the solution for this, let's break down why exactly it happens. Now electrolytes have a number of functions in our body. They even help to regulate how acidic our stomach is, as well as helping out with nutrient transport. But we are concerned with how they help to regulate our body's fluid levels. The reason your electrolytes being out of balance is an issue for some people on carnivore is that it results in their bodies not retaining the right amount of water, and so therefore they become dehydrated and experience these issues. Now when you first start carnivore, you actually need more electrolytes than you typically would. The reason for this is because the carnivore diet is a low carbohydrate diet. Now whenever we consume carbohydrates, we get a massive blood sugar spike. And another hormone called insulin also elevates to bring our blood sugar back down. Now having lower blood sugar levels and therefore less insulin is a good thing. However, here's the thing about insulin. Another function that it has is that it helps our kidneys to retain electrolytes. So we go on carnivore, we have less carbohydrates, therefore less of these blood sugar spikes, and therefore less insulin. What happens is our bodies are now less effective at retaining the electrolytes that we consume. This is why when people first start a carnivore diet, they're much more likely to crave salt. Now what happens is that over time, your body gets used to this low carbohydrate state, which helps it conserve sodium as well as the other electrolytes. And so these issues resolve themselves. However, when you first start the carnivore diet, you want to include more salt than you typically would. On carnivore, you have a lot less inflammation, which leads to a lot less fluid retention. Now with less fluid retention, the body needs a lot less sodium to maintain its blood pressure. And the kidneys actually become more efficient at sodium reabsorption. I mean, the body conserves more salt without additional intake. Okay, so now we know all of this, we know we need more at the start, and we know that over time we'll need less, but exactly how much shall we consume? Remember at the start I said how you needed four electrolytes? Well, salt is actually a combination of two of them, sodium and chloride. Now, chloride's not usually an issue, but regarding sodium, like I said, at the start we're gonna absorb a lot less of it due to the fact that we're in this low carbohydrate state, as well as the fact that most people have consumed a lot of sodium because a lot of it is in the hyper-processed foods that most people consumed before they started carnivore. So when you begin a carnivore diet, you're going to want to put a lot more salt on your meat than you typically would. The general rule is to salt to taste. Now at the start, this might seem ridiculous. I remember when I first started carnivore, I had a massive desire for salt. And so I'd put a lot of it on. I remember my friends were genuinely concerned with how much salt I was putting on my meat. But the good thing with salt is that if you have healthy kidneys, it will just be urinated out. Now what happens over time as your body becomes more effective at retaining electrolytes, is you'll find you start putting less and less on. If I had one of those super salty steaks that I had when I first started carnivore, right now, I wouldn't be able to have it. It would just taste ridiculously salty and it would taste terrible. I've even heard Dr. Chafee talk about how he's at the point now where he just doesn't salt anything. Like I said, meat naturally contains every electrolyte, so you can get all the sodium and the chloride that you need from meat alone. In fact, some people find that after a while, they actually do better without any salt. Another person who uses no salt is Bella, which many of you all know is Steak and Butter Girl. She finds that she feels a lot better when she has zero salt on her meat. Now, I've been on carnivore for 18 months now, but for me personally, if I don't put any salt on my meals, I start cramping up. But there's a reason for that, which I'll get into shortly. Important disclaimer, however, the salt matrix is much more concerned with aesthetic appeal than they are with your health, so be careful. Lots of brands of salt actually add in different ingredients. I have a whole video on this topic. It's pretty insane. Now, when it comes to magnesium and potassium, I think for most people, you'll never need to think about these things. There's just simply enough in meat alone. The vast majority of electrolyte issues are simply caused by not enough salt. So for most people, I wouldn't concern yourself about these. Now, there are exceptions. I'll get into shortly exactly who should supplement with them. One thing I do want to point out, however, is to be very careful with electrolyte consumption and stomach issues. Too much magnesium and too much potassium can actually cause heart problems. So when you consume too many of these things, the body wants to get rid of them as fast as possible. I know someone who, when they first started carnivore, they weren't salting their meat enough. So they started cramping up and they thought that it was a magnesium and potassium problem. So they added a lot of magnesium and potassium supplements 
into their diet. But all that happened when they did this is that they got terrible stomach issues. So if you are going to supplement with these things, be careful you don't overdo it. One thing I do want to say, however, is that there's no real reason for electrolyte issues on a carnivore diet. Sure, at the start, there may be some issues whilst you're adapting. But remember, all of the symptoms that you're experiencing are a result of dehydration. Now, yes, electrolytes help you retain the water, but the main cause of dehydration is not enough water itself. So one thing you might want to consider if you are experiencing these symptoms of dehydration is are you drinking enough water? The best thing to do is to go by thirst. Do you find yourself getting thirsty? If you do notice that you are getting thirsty quite a bit, up the water. It can go the other way, however. If you're drinking too much water, it essentially just flushes your system. And you can actually have electrolyte imbalances if you're drinking too much water. However, the vast majority of the time, it's because people aren't drinking enough water. There is one story, however, that I have heard of this one person. They were a very high-ranking CEO. They went on a bit of a health kick and decided to do all these things that were stereotypically healthy. So they started drinking a lot of water. And their brain function was just destroyed. They were drinking an absurd amount of water because they thought it was healthy. And consequently, it just messed with their electrolytes and they had terrible brain fog. Now, as soon as they went back to drinking a normal amount of water, this brain fog reversed. But yeah, that is another thing you may want to play around with a bit. Are you drinking enough water? Potentially drinking too much water? Again, it's very simple. Just go by thirst. Now, if you are someone who's been loading up on these electrolyte supplements and you're still experiencing electrolyte issues, which have come as a result of dehydration, it's very clear that you aren't experiencing these issues from lack of electrolytes. So therefore, for these people, it's very likely you're just not drinking enough water. Another consideration is coffee. Coffee is a diuretic, which means it strips your body of electrolytes. Now, this right here is probably why I still have to consume some salt, even after being on carnivore for a while, because I do still drink a bit of coffee. Many people think that you need to consume some sort of plants, whether it be vegetables or fruits, in order to get your electrolytes in. This could not be further from the truth. Every single electrolyte that you need can be found in meat alone. It's also in eggs, it's also in seafood. On a carnivore diet, you can get them. So to answer the question, do you need to supplement? I think for most people, probably not. All you need to do is salt to taste. Remember, at the start, chances are you're going to need a lot more than you typically would. And what you'll find is you just naturally, progressively want less and less. However, there are a few outliers. I do hear of people saying they do actually feel a lot better when they do include a little bit of magnesium and potassium supplementation. Again, these people probably do, however, fall into those three categories of being a genetic outlier, athlete, or living in a really hot climate. Now, even though I do think that for the vast majority of people, you don't need to supplement, one thing I will say is that supplementation of electrolytes is somewhat evolutionary consistent because historically the water that we drink would run over rocks. Now these would be mineral rocks. So the water that we used to drink would have a lot more electrolytes in it than the stuff that we currently drink, which is largely stripped of it. But to be fair, we haven't been living this way for a pretty long time now. And again, most people just won't need electrolytes. Earlier in the video, I talked about how some of the practices regarding salt are just terrible. Some contain bleach, meaning you're just stripped of all the good things. So in this video here, I break down exactly which salt is best to consume and which ones you want to avoid. See you next time.